Hello and welcome to Amiga Tech, the series in which I take a look at effects I've programmed for the Commodore Amiga computer, usually in assembly language. The effect we're looking at today is a variation on the standard sprite background layer you may know from games such as R-Type 2. The variation here is that my version of the effect does not actually require a repeating background pattern, but allows for a freeform sprite layer. So let's take a look at that effect in action, and then I'll explain how I did it. So like the status bar indicates, what we're looking at here is a 15 color foreground and a four color background mode, where the background can have well any shape you desire. I like this split in color numbers. I think it's personally think it's more useful than the dual play field seven plus eight split which is part of the reason I made it, the other being that I'm just really uh, into trying out new things for my Amiga. As you can see in the uh, example I showed just now, this effect actually allows for a 16 color foreground and a four color sprite based background, which is completely freeform. You can have any whiff of pattern, any tile map you like in use. This is not common, as far as I know, or as far as I've been able to find. It is normally not done like this at all, but thanks to the magic, magic of the copper uh, and glitter, we can manage to do this anyway. So how does it work? Well, essentially, what I've done is I've created a copper list, which first displays the hardware sprites, which is the 128 pixel block that can be displayed side by side well, of sprite data by the Amiga at any height. This is what the hardware always does. And then I've used the copper to say, okay, well, as you're displaying sprite zero now, please move sprite zero forward by 128 pixels, change data A, change data B, that gives it new graphics data, and then do that for sprite one, two, three, and etc., etc. If you do that, you'll find that if you take a 4-bit plane that is 16 color or less screen mode, low resolution only, that you can actually outrun how fast the sprite redraw goes. Which is excellent news because it allows for a freeform sprite layer. Now because this is uh, not very visible perhaps, I've also prepared a small animation that shows you how this works in detail. So here goes. First, we display all hardware sprites. Then, we reload the sprites using the copper, position and data. And in the animation, you can see the sprites that have already been drawn on screen being darkened out. This is the progress of the scan line. You can see that although the copper keeps drawing new sprites, it is slowly being overtaken. It's really raising the beam. And lastly, we reposition all sprites back to their original positions and repeat. Now a little bit of background about how I got to this might be interesting. You see, I had been looking at uh, dual layer screen modes on the Amiga for a while now. I find them fascinating and it, it, it dawned on me that on the OCS ECS Amigas, which is all the Amigas from the A500 to the A3000, these were somewhat limited. Essentially, you either had an option of uh, using dual playfield mode which gave you a seven color foreground and a eight color background. You had a, the ability to use a standard sprite layer, which gave you either 128 pixels repeating pattern in four colors or 64 packet pixels repeating in 16 colors, the latter being used in Risky Woods, the game. And, and Risky Woods actually was the inspiration here. Risky Woods showed me in an example that you could actually do a lot more with the copper in the time it had than I thought you could. So I thought, let's try it out. If you look at the copper list, and we'll, uh, I'll show you the visual DMA debugger on screen here so that you can have an indication on how, uh, how it all works, you'll see that the yellow bars, which are the uh, copper activity, you see that there's an awful lot of copper activity, which brings me to the biggest con of this effect, it takes a lot of rest of time. It takes so much rest of time and I'm not entirely sure that you couldn't do this faster with the blizzard. Right, you may be able to make 
a one or two ba a bit plain background layer allowing for a row two or four colors background um, with the blitter instead and be faster i don't know i haven't tried it might be an interesting experiment but this is about the sprite version now what do i do i redraw the sprite data right and that takes a lot of effort i'm not going to go into all the detail here you can read much more detail on my website uh, link to the article is in the description below but essentially what i do is i spread all the work out right the heavy work is done by the copper and the updating of the copper list is done by the blitter in 32 frames time right so the background scrolls at one pixel every other frame that's 25 uh, frames per second gives me 32 frames before there's 16 sprite pixels displayed to do it and how does that work well i actually move the sprites on screen so i don't update the content of the sprites all at once every frame what i do is i update only the positions of the sprites and then take the remainder of the time I get from that to do all the redrawing of extra graphics from the tile map. I find it a fascinating example of what you can achieve with the uh, Commodore Amiga if you want to put some effort in. I'm not sure how useful it is, that's not up to me to decide. You can have a look at the source code, which is also on my website, link in the description below, and see for yourself whether or not you like it. As for me, I hope you enjoyed watching this little uh, little video on well my new Amiga Tech uh, example and article and I hope to see you soon for another video how oh, there will be more yet I know uh, I have been a bit um, slacking off in terms of releasing new videos but more videos will be released honest with that said I hope you enjoyed watching this thank you very much for watching if you liked it consider subscribing leave a comment or two I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.